Okay, so Sweden, a fully automated society where work is optional. Like seriously optional. Yeah, not because the economy's tanked or anything, but because we've got robots and AI handling pretty much everything. Yeah, think about it. You could be spending your days, you know, learning astrophysics, finally writing that novel. Starting that alpaca farm you've always dreamed of. Exactly. It's like yeah. straight out of science fiction, right? It does sound pretty futuristic. Yeah. But Sweden's actually aiming to make this happen. For real? Yeah, within the next like 10 to 20 years. Wow. And what's interesting is they're not exactly starting from zero here. Yeah, that's right. I was reading about how they're already using robots for like all sorts of things. Like didn't one municipality automate their entire social benefit application process or something? Exactly. They've got a high robot density in manufacturing already think like Volvo's car factories. Right. And even like government paperwork is getting a robotic makeover these days. Wow. But it's not just about the robots themselves. They've got this strong tech sector, a culture where public and private organizations actually collaborate on innovation and a really digitally savvy population. So we're kind of ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. Exactly. Think about a company like Einride. Einrail. A Swedish company that's putting self-driving electric trucks on public roads already. Oh, wow. I hadn't heard of them. Yeah. So this is a country that's pretty comfortable with tech, right? Yeah. So the jump to even more automation might not be as jarring for them as it would be in other places. That makes sense. But even with all that, yeah. can Sweden realistically afford a society where no one has to work? You're right. Like, what's the economic engine that could even make this whole thing possible? It's a really interesting mix of like traditional strength and these very forward thinking strategies. Okay. So Sweden has this abundance of natural resources, right? Forests, iron, or hydropower, yeah. which provides a really solid economic base. Okay. But they're not just extracting and selling raw materials, they're using them to create innovative high tech products. Uh, so instead of just shipping out logs, they're creating, say, sustainable building materials. Exactly. One example is their production of fossil free steel, which is made using hydropower and iron ore. Oh, wow. They're way ahead of the curve when it comes to sustainable manufacturing. That's really cool. And beyond that, they're investing heavily in AI and robotics research. Okay. The idea is to not only use automation domestically, but to become a global hub for automation solutions. So they could be exporting the technology, but also the knowledge of how to actually implement it. Precisely imagine everything from those self-driving vehicles we mentioned to like AI-powered educational platforms. Right. They could become the go-to source for building the automated future. That's amazing. It's like they're turning their entire society into this real-world test case, and other countries are definitely going to be watching closely. I bet. Now, what's really intriguing to me is how they're combining this economic vision with their social goals. Okay, now that's where it gets really interesting to me. I mean, a work-optional society. It's hard to even wrap your head around that. I know, right? Do they really think it's possible within the next decade or two? Well, fully automated within 10 years is incredibly ambitious, even for Sweden. Yeah. We're talking about automating not just factories and transport, but also really complex fields like healthcare and education, even creative fields like art and music. Yeah, it's hard to picture a robot composing a symphony or writing a screenplay. Hmm. Although AI is getting pretty good at some creative tasks these days. It is. So are there specific areas where they're focusing their automation efforts in the near term? Definitely one area where they're already making some big strides is defense. Defense. Saab, a Swedish defense company, just unveiled this new drone swarm technology. Okay. Imagine groups of drones working together autonomously scouting and identifying targets. Like a robotic scout team. Exactly. They're also aiming for autonomous systems across land and sea, unmanned ground vehicles, and submarines, for example. Wow. So could a fully robotic army actually be on the horizon? It's a possibility they're actively exploring. Wow. And that raises some pretty big ethical questions, too. But moving beyond defense, what the most intriguing aspects of their plan is how they envision education in this automated future. Okay. They're talking about AI tutors. AI tutors. Imagine a personalized AI mentor for every student guiding their learning from childhood to adulthood. So like a supercharged version of those language learning apps, but for everything. Pretty much. What would that even look like in practice? Think of an AI system that adapts to your individual learning style. Okay. Are you a visual learner auditory? 
do you learn best by doing the AI tutor figures that out and then tailors lessons and feedback to match how you learn best. Wow. It could give you instant feedback and even help with like life coaching and goal setting. That's pretty amazing. But wouldn't that be incredibly expensive to implement on a nationwide scale? It would be a massive undertaking for sure. Yeah. And what about the teachers? Well, the idea isn't necessarily to replace them entirely, but to augment their capabilities. So the AI would be more like a teaching assistant helping teachers personalize instruction and provide more individualized support. Exactly. And this AI-powered education system wouldn't just stop at traditional schooling. They're talking about fostering lifelong learning, allowing people to continuously explore new skills and career paths throughout their lives. Okay. And all of this is designed to prepare people for a world where work isn't a necessity, but a choice. That brings us back to the big question, what will people do all day in a work-optional society? Won't they just end up glued to their VR headsets, binging the latest streaming shows? That's certainly a possibility. Yeah. The vision Sweden is putting forward is much more interesting than that they're talking about creating a society where people are encouraged to find meaning and purpose in things other than their jobs. So what kinds of things are they envisioning? I mean, work provides structure, social interaction, mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment. How do you replace that? That's a key challenge they're grappling with. Their model emphasizes things like thriving arts communities, abundant opportunities for volunteering and civic engagement, and a strong focus on personal development and well-being. So they're essentially asking, what does it mean to live a fulfilling life when traditional work is no longer the central focus? Yeah. That's a pretty profound question, and I'm not sure anyone has the answer yet, but I'm definitely curious to hear more about how Sweden thinks they can make this work. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's a question a lot of people are asking, what do we do with all our free time if robots are doing most of the work? Right, like are we all just going to sit around and play video games? Well, that's one possibility, but Sweden's answer is that this shift could actually unlock like a whole new level of human potential. Okay, so they're not just talking about a life of leisure but about using that free time for something more meaningful. Exactly. They're suggesting that without the need to work for survival, people could dedicate their time to things like creative pursuits, lifelong learning community involvement, or simply spending quality time with loved ones. So almost like a Renaissance 2.0. Yeah, kind of. They see it as a chance to really redefine what it means to live a fulfilling life. That's a really interesting perspective. But let's get back to the practical side of things for a moment. We were yeah. talking about AI tutors and lifelong learning. Right. But how realistic is it to think that everyone will embrace this idea? Mm. What about people who just aren't interested in learning new things or who struggle with technology? That's a valid point, and it's definitely something they'll need to address. Their approach relies heavily on the assumption that people will be motivated to learn and grow even without the traditional incentives of work. So they're banking on intrinsic motivation rather than external pressures? That's a pretty big gamble, isn't it? It is a gamble, and it's one of the biggest uncertainties in their plan. They're essentially betting on human nature, the idea that people are naturally curious and have this inherent desire to learn and contribute. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that bet pays off. But let's shift gears for a second and talk about another key aspect of this vision sustainability. How does all this automation fit into Sweden's commitment to environmental responsibility? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're already known for being leaders in renewable energy and sustainable forestry. Right. And they're applying that same eco-conscious mindset to their automation strategy. Remember their fossil-free steel production? Yeah. That's just one example of how they're trying to make sure their technological advancements are aligned with their environmental goals. Uh, so they're not just automating for the sake of efficiency. They're thinking about the environmental impact as well. Exactly. They believe automation can actually be a powerful tool for sustainability. How so? For instance, AI can be used to optimize energy consumption, reduce waste, and develop more efficient transportation systems. So automation could actually help them reach their climate goals. That's the idea. Yeah. And they believe this focus on sustainable automation could also make Swedish technologies and solutions more appealing to other countries. Makes sense. Many nations are looking for ways to reduce their carbon footprint while also boosting their economies. Right. Sweden's model could provide a blueprint for doing both. Okay, so we've talked about the potential social and environmental benefits. But there's one big elephant in the room that we haven't really addressed yet. Jobs. Right. If robots are doing most of the work, what happens to all the people who currently rely on those jobs for their livelihoods? Yeah. Won't widespread automation lead to mass unemployment and social unrest? That's a major concern, and it's one that Sweden is taking very seriously. 
They acknowledge that the transition to a fully automated society will inevitably disrupt the job market, but they believe that with careful planning and proactive policies, they can mitigate the negative impacts. So what are some of the strategies they're considering? Well, we've already talked about universal basic income, uh -huh. which would provide everyone with a financial safety net regardless of their employment status. Right, that could help cushion the blow for people who lose their jobs to automation or the other ideas they're exploring. Absolutely. They're also investing heavily in job retraining programs to help people acquire the skills they'll need to thrive in an automated workforce. And they're exploring innovative models for shared ownership of robots and AI, where the benefits of automation are more widely distributed. So instead of just a few corporations controlling all the robots, mm -hmm. the ownership could be spread out among more people, kind of like a cooperative model. Exactly. They're looking at ways to democratize access to the benefits of automation rather than letting the wealth concentrate in the hands of a few. That makes sense. But even with all these efforts, won't there still be some jobs that simply disappear? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to imagine a robot replacing a surgeon or a therapist. Right. But what about all the jobs that involve routine tasks or manual labor? You're right. Not all jobs are created equal when it comes to automation. Some are more vulnerable than others, but Sweden believes that even in a highly automated world, there will always be roles that require uniquely human skills. So what are some examples of jobs that they think will stick around even as robots become more prevalent? Think about professions that require complex problem-solving, creativity, empathy, and social intelligence. Things like teaching healthcare social work, counseling the arts. It's reassuring to hear that not every job is destined to be replaced by a robot. Mm. But there's another concern that comes to mind, cybersecurity. Right. If we're talking about a society where everything is connected and run by AI, what happens if there's a major hack or system failure? Mm -hmm. Couldn't that bring the whole system crashing down? That's a very real risk, and it's one that keeps cybersecurity experts up at night. The more reliant we become on these interconnected automated systems, the more vulnerable we are to cyber attacks and other disruptions. So cybersecurity is going to be absolutely critical in this automated future. Absolutely. Sweden is investing heavily in cybersecurity to try to stay ahead of the curve, but it's a constant race against those who would exploit vulnerabilities in these systems. And it's not just about preventing malicious attacks. Right. They also need to consider things like system reliability and redundancy, what happens if there's a power outage or a natural disaster. So they need backup plans and fail safes in case something goes wrong. Exactly. They need to make sure these systems are resilient and can continue to function even in the face of unexpected challenges. They're essentially building a whole new infrastructure for society and it needs to be robust and secure. It sounds like there's a lot to consider. And speaking of potential risk, I have to ask, what about the robots themselves? Okay. I mean, could they become a threat to humans? I've seen enough science fiction movies to be a little wary of super intelligent machines turning against their creators. It's a question that's both fascinating and a little unnerving right now. The idea of robots becoming conscious and malevolent is mm -hmm. still firmly in the realm of science fiction. But as AI becomes more sophisticated, it's crucial to ensure that it's developed and deployed responsibly and ethically. So we need to make sure that AI is aligned with human values yeah. and doesn't pose a threat to our safety or well-being. But how do you actually do that? It's a complex challenge that involves a lot of different disciplines, computer science, ethics, philosophy, psychology, social sciences. Yeah. They're exploring things like building in ethical constraints to AI systems, establishing clear guidelines for AI development and use, and fostering open dialogue about the potential risks and benefits of advanced AI. So it's not just about the technical aspects, but also about the societal and philosophical implications. Exactly. It's about ensuring that as we develop these powerful technologies, we're doing so in a way that serves humanity, not the other way around. Yeah. It's about creating a future where technology enhances our lives and helps us reach our full potential rather than becoming a threat to our existence. That's a really important point and is one that I think gets lost in a lot of the hype surrounding AI. It's easy to get caught up in the wow factor of these technologies. Ah. But we need to remember that they're tools. And like any tool they can be used for good or for ill, yep. it all depends on the choices we make. Sweden seems to be taking that responsibility seriously, which is encouraging. Mm -hmm. But with all these potential challenges and risks, is their vision of a fully automated society really feasible? It's a bold and ambitious vision, and there's no guarantee of success. But what's exciting is that they're not just blindly rushing into automation. They're taking this holistic, long-term perspective, recognizing the need to address social, economic, and ethical considerations alongside technological advancements. 
So they're not just focused on the how of automation, but also on the why and the what for. Precisely. They're asking the big questions. What kind of society do we want to create? How can automation enhance human well-being? How can we make sure the benefits are shared widely and that no one is left behind? It's a fascinating experiment, and the whole world is watching to see what happens. It really is a remarkable undertaking. And even if they don't achieve full automation within the next decade or two, their efforts are already pushing the boundaries of what's possible and forcing us to confront some of the most fundamental questions about the future of work, society, and humanity itself. It's a journey that's full of both promise and peril, and it's one that will continue to unfold in the years to come. But for now, we've reached the end of our deep dive into Sweden's automated future. Thanks for joining us on this exploration. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. And if this deep dive has sparked your curiosity, we encourage you to explore the links to all the sources we've discussed in our show notes. And as always, keep those brains buzzing until next time. We've been talking about Sweden's plan to become like the world's first fully automated society, you know, where work is optional and robots handle most of the tasks. Right. It's a fascinating vision, and they're already making some serious headway. Yeah. But as with any major societal shift, there are potential downsides to think about, right? Absolutely. We've touched on a few already, like inequality, cybersecurity, the ethical implications of AI. Wow. These are all complex issues that require careful consideration. Yeah. And there's one more we haven't really discussed yet that's crucial to this whole idea of a work optional society. Okay. What about the psychological impact of not having to work? That's a great point. Work provides more than just income. It gives us structure, social interaction, a sense of purpose. If you take that away, mm -hmm. what happens? Do people just lose their motivation and become listless? It's a real concern. Some studies suggest that long-term unemployment can have negative effects on mental health and well-being. But the key difference here is that we're not talking about unemployment in the traditional sense. Right. In a work-optional society, people aren't forced into idleness. They're free to pursue whatever activities give them meaning and purpose, whether that's creative pursuits, volunteering learning, or simply spending time with loved ones. So the key is providing people with opportunities to find fulfillment outside of traditional work. Exactly. And this is where Sweden's focus on things like strong community networks, lifelong learning, and personal development comes in. Okay. They're trying to create a society where people have the resources and support they need to thrive regardless of whether they hold a traditional job. That makes sense, but it's still a huge leap of faith, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we're so conditioned to think of work as the central organizing principle of our lives. To shift away from that is a pretty radical departure. It is a radical departure, and it's one that will require a fundamental rethinking of our values and priorities as a society. Yeah. But if Sweden can pull it off, it could pave the way for a whole new era of human flourishing. It's certainly a bold experiment, and one that has the potential to transform not just Sweden, but the entire world. But with all these potential challenges and uncertainties, how confident are you that they can actually achieve this vision within the next 10 to 20 years. I think it's important to be realistic. Full automation within that time frame is incredibly ambitious. There are still many technological hurdles to overcome, not to mention the social and economic adjustments that will be needed. Yeah. But even if they don't achieve full automation within that time frame, I think their efforts are incredibly valuable. So even if they don't reach the finish line, the journey itself is worthwhile. Exactly. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible, asking important questions, and forcing us to confront the challenges and opportunities of this new era of automation. And in the process, they're creating a blueprint that other countries can learn from and adapt to their own contexts. So Sweden might not have all the answers, but they're certainly leading the way and showing us what might be possible. And that's what the deep dive is all about, exploring the frontiers of knowledge and sparking your curiosity. We hope this deep dive into Sweden's automated future has given you a glimpse of what might be in store for all of us. Make sure to check out our show notes for links to all the sources we've discussed so you can explore this topic further on your own. And as always, stay curious.